What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with the Uno X career mode and we have, I think, a record number of races in one episode coming up today. And that's because off camera I have already played the Saudi Tour, I have already played the Volta Valenciana, I have already played the Tour de la Provence and I'm going to show you the highlights, hopefully nice and condensed so you can see what's happened in a quick and insightful manner of those three races before we get into the Volta Algarve today. We're playing Andalusia as well. I'm not sure I'll show that. I don't know. We'll see if we can squeeze it in in the end. But um, first, I think, let's just get straight into it and the Saudi tour because here we had the debut for Alexander Kristoff. Of course, then, the Saudi tour is packed full of flat stages, sprint stages, where Alex Kristoff can hopefully show off his prowess. You can see uh, our lineup. He is, of course, our leader, but Wout Van Aert, Tim Merlier, and the like are also present in Saudi, so this is not going to be a walkover by any stretch whatsoever. However, stage one, you can see we are on the front. Uri Anstadt is here. Wrestle is ready to lead up Christoph, but the Ineos Grenadiers in the perfect position on the left-hand side of the road under the Flamme Rouge. Christoph gets caught a little bit behind his lead out man. It's not going to be a dream start for Uno X. Davide Ballerini wins that stage one. We were only P6 right there, but moving swiftly forward onto stage two. Again, we are in a dominant position early on though in the lead out. Still, we have two and a half K to go. And Ineos, again, not really known for their lead out capabilities, but they are right to the fore. Yet again, Wrestle leading out Christoph this time. We get caught, but we get a nice slingshot past to the right hand side of our lead out man. And Alexander Christoph is a winner for Uno X ahead of Elia Viviani. That's the guy that Ineos are working for here. But Christoph gets his first stage victory. We try to back it up to make it two in a row as well. Maybe claim the leader's jersey as well. We go for the line. It's a quick burst, slightly uphill as well. Such a close finish here. But Stan Van Tricks, I think it is going to be, for quick step Vu wins just ahead of Alex Kristoff, who has to settle for second place. Nonetheless, though, I think we're in the sprinter's jersey right now. And stage four features a flat, very long, very draggy run to the line. It's Kristoff Laporte just edging out Alex Kristoff. Oh, my word. And we're just going to lose it. Are oh, we? No, we're not. Alex Kristoff steals it from Laporte on the line. His second victory. And he gets that green leader's jersey now as well. One more stage then. Can we? cap it off with a hat trick and secure the lead of the race we go nice and late we're in the perfect position our lead outs here in Saudi have been just perfect Hamza a surprise rival for us there but Alex Kristoff he sits up he celebrates early and he has hit early season form here for Uno X very excited to finally have him at the team and he wins the Saudi tour on his debut and so we followed that up with the Volta Valenciana, a very fun race. And this saw Andreas Kron make his debut. Very good team we bring here. Also with Magnus Court. We started with the team time trial. As you can see, I simulated it. I think we lost over two and a half minutes uh, to Quickstep, who were the better team. But stage two now, we are in the breakaway. You can see Tim Wellens and Valerio Conti up the road alongside Torsten Train, who is on a mega plus five day. And at this point, it really looks like the breakaway are going to go on and secure stage victory. Train drops his rivals on the final climb of the day and solos in to the finish line to win the stage 43 seconds clear of his rivals. But also, he gains enough time on everyone else to take the leader's jersey as well. What a turnaround after a shocking time trial to start the race. Anyway, stage three, and it is a chance for the sprinters here. Magnus caught in a brilliant, brilliant wheel here, trying to follow, I think, David Decker for Trek. Sega Fredo under the flamme rouge. We try to kick past David Decker. Do we have the pace? Not quite. David Decker, a big powerhouse. He holds on and wins for Trek Sega Fredo. Really nice signing, actually, for Trek, it must be said. But now, stage four, of course, Torsten Train is still holding the race lead. And I have decided to try and pack the breakaway here. We have Andreas Kron, Anton Scharmeg, two of the riders left now at the front. 
starts about halfway into the stage and this is placing some pressure on some other teams who are now having to do the chasing with Train in the lead of the race and Sharmik doing a great job for Kron even though he's on that minus day Kron looking pretty good with Aliotti and Izagiri now trying to follow but Kron kicks away with less than 3k to go now Sharmik what a domestique role and Kron is the only rider left out front with 1k to go less than that now and oh my word he's done though he's done you can see train has followed everyone else perfectly and Kron he's trying to hold on for his first win for Uno X but no he's going to be robbed but he is going to be robbed by his teammate just beating Malawi Kudus and it is Torsten Train winning again to hold the leader's jersey what a victory there are some good riders here as you can see by the GC on the right hand side right there but he's going to hold on to win the Volta Valenciana by far the biggest result in his career so far. Really cool to see uh, him getting that result. But now we try to get another win on the final stage. Rasmus Tiller leading out Magnus Court Nielsen. Have we left it too late? It looks like we have, but we come through just at the end. But Fernando Gaviria is going to beat us. We finish second for what will be a super successful race. Magnus Court second twice, but Torsten Train, two stage victories and the GC overall after losing over two and a half minutes in that early time trial. An absurd race here in Valencia. And so we're swiftly flying through the races right now as we head to France and the Tour de la Provence. You can see Magnus Court Nielsen here again. This race took place, I think, a week or two after the other two races. Um, we put in a decent time to start, but Stefan Kung is going to destroy everyone and move into that beautiful patchwork leader's jersey uh, after stage one. And we do have a hilly second stage here you can see I am all over the front of this race trying to pile the pressure on and as we come to the top of this climb Anton Sharmik is going to try and just try and create some separation kick away from the rest of the field and he is holding just a slender lead for now and again this does mean that Magnus Court Nielsen can sit behind but I can see an opportunity here and Magnus Court Nielsen is going to try and cover off any other moves he has joined Eric Fetter, Maro Schmidt and Ilan Van Wilder the quick step teammates plus Fetter plus Magnus Court who is sitting on trying to chase back to Sharmik but Anton Sharmik is going to win we can't stop winning to start this season what a year we are having Sharmig celebrates rightfully so but I do think that Mauro Schmidt quick steps young rider is going to move into the lead of the race now ahead of Stefan Kung ahead of Sharmig and Magnus Court as well you got a glimpse of it right there so this is our final opportunity right now to win this race because Mauro Schmidt and quick step are dominating at the moment I have put Rasmus Tiller in the breakaway early on just to try and give us something of a tactical advantage and now the final climb is upon us. Tiller has been caught but it coincides absolutely perfectly with Magnus Court making his move on the final ascent I think of the entire race not just the stage but the entire race so we make our move here Magnus Court on the attack trying to pressurize Maro Schmidt and the young quickstep team here with Elan Van Wilder as well and we've gone clear with Roman Siegler of all people not quite sure how he's the guy that's been able to follow but you can see this race is absolutely decimated due to our work on the previous two climbs and Roman Siegler is not working with Magnus Court at all he is having to pull him all the way to the line but it's not going to matter I am happy to gift the Frenchman a home win on home soil from Michelin Premier Tech because Magnus Court Nielsen secures second place Schmidt and Van Wilder couldn't follow and Magnus Court Nielsen is going to claim the patchwork jersey at the final opportunity. What a race and what a stage that was. That was so, so fun. Really putting the quick step boys under pressure. And I was wrong because clearly we do have a couple climbs, a couple small climbs on the final stage of the race. But can we grab victory in that patchwork jersey for Magnus Court Nielsen? We're trying one case go under the flam rouge and we're trying to kick away. We can't find any space though with Magnus Court and Simon Sinok, I think, is for Kofidis. He is going to win. A surprise winner to me. Rasmus Tiller held on for second ahead of Peter Sagan, whilst Magnus Court Nielsen does secure the overall victory with Mario Schmidt and Van Wilder second and third, and Anton Sharmik in fourth. A real battle between Uno X and Quick Stop, but we did come out 
on top. Three super exciting races. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that little recap of how we've been getting on in the really exciting early season races. I really, really do enjoy these races early in the year. They're really exciting, shorts, punchy, lots of action. So hopefully you enjoyed that, like I said. But today, we are going to be live commentating, live playing the Volta Algarve. And so, five stages coming up in this one. Let's take a closer look to start. We have a flatter stage. We have a very difficult one on the Alto de Foya. That is a really difficult climb. Uh, I think Tobias Harlan Johansson came second there last year on that stage. We have stage four, another punchy one before we finish with a time trial in Lagoa. His brother Anders is here to help him out, of course. We have Mogensen as well. Soren Wormschgold actually won the first stage of this race last year. Let's see if he can do it again this time around. We have also Johansson, Price Peterson for that final time trial and Lars Zorgestad who will probably be collecting bottles throughout. So I think you guys know I really enjoy this race so obviously it's great to be here again this season but not so great to see Wout van Aert has decided to come over to Portugal as well for Jumbo Visma. Oh, he follows us everywhere. He rides, last year he rode over 100 race days. And he won about 35 races. I wouldn't be surprised if he did it again here. But Mike Woods is here. Gianni Moscon. We have Polo, the very talented new gen as well. But last year's winner, Joao Almeida, is nowhere to be seen. So we do have a tricky finish here. Sorgstad has actually fallen, unfortunately, for him. But a lot of hills in this finale. You can see quite a lot of riders are now well behind with 12k to go. It does start to flatten out now, though. And so here we go. Jimmy Johansson does catch Peter Seri, the final rider to be caught from today's breakaway. And it's a very small little lead out. It's only Johansson we have to help Zuren Wernschko today. Let's put him up to maybe 87. 3k to go. Is that too early? I'm not sure, but I think once we crest this little climb, we can probably start to go 99. Jimmy putting Surin in the perfect position to repeat his success from last year. And there goes Surin. Rouge goal going for the line. Simmons is coming. Nizzolo is coming. And I think Giacomo Nizzolo has us today. It's a close finish, but we are going to finish second place with Rouge Gold. Oh. That was unlucky. Honestly, I'm not sure there's more we could have done today. Nizzolo is just a quicker rider than Werenge Gold, and it cost us in today's finish. And by the way, here's our team that will be going to Andalusia. Skelmos and Kron highlighting that squad, I think. I might simulate these races. And so the Alto de Foya, this is definitely where uh, a major chunk of the GC differences is going to take place. Esteban Chavez is the stage favourite. I didn't know he was here. Van Aert, Fulsang, and of course Tobias is here as well. So not going to be easy. We're going for the stage win though. Soren is at least rewarded with a very nice looking red jersey, which complements our team kit very nicely. But Tobias, more importantly, on a plus two today. So the climbing begins. Captain Price, unfortunately for him, has fallen. He won't be guessing back to the peloton today. But I know this stage can be so explosive early on. We need to be very aware here. Interesting as well to see it's Efapal, the local team, who are all over the front of the race. Who are they working for? I wonder. It's Juan Pedro Lopez, a very good climber. But now I'm trying to assert a little dominance on the stage. Mogensen has come to the front, working for, of course, Tobias before the Alto de Foya. And now we have the favourite starting to make their move. It's Esteban Chavez, the first to attack. Rui Costa looking quite strong today as well. There is Wout van Aert, and Tobias still has Mogensen, who is almost done, and then his brother Anders, who is in great form today. But it is Rui Costa ahead with 5k to go. So we've seen a great ride by Peter Mogensen. Mogensen, he is now done. Just 28 riders are left in the front group. There goes Simmons. There goes Wout van Aert. And Anders needs to do a massive job for his brother today. Look at Wout van Aert go. He's attacked. And are we going to see him again? And I'm not sure we need to make our move very shortly now with Tobias. We only have 1.5k to go. We've managed our energy very well indeed. And Anders is almost done. But Tobias up to 92. Is it too late? Let's go for Wout van Aert. Uh, we have a Bulgarian as well, just ahead of us. Wout van Aert is just up the road. Here comes Tobias, though. Do we have the momentum? I think we do, and we steal victory from Wout van Aert here today. What a win from Tobias against Wout van Aert. Great ride by Anders as well to finish fourth place on the day. What 
a stage that was. What a day that was. We steal victory from Wout van Aert. I'm sure he thought he'd won it. We just had enough left though to accelerate at the end and catch the big Belgian. We have Radu Bugniak, who's a very good young puncher for Porto. He did well too, um, but a very great day. A great day for the Johannesson bros. And of course, that puts us in the lead of the race, but with a time trial coming up, Wout van Aert happens to be a pretty good time trialist, I would say. So we need to gain more time over him if we want any chance of defeating him. But for now, it's another chance for the sprinters, which means Wout van Aert is the day's favourite again. Cool to see Tobias in the leader's yellow jersey today, of course. But we have lost Sorgstad and Captain Price already after chasing down a pretty good breakaway up the road. I think they will be caught today and it will come in for a mass sprint. But Jimmy, it's up to you again to lead out Surin. No. No, 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 no. It's a, it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare because Tobias has crashed in the lead of the race. I know that Giacomo Nizzolo is here as well, but oh my word, this is so far from ideal. Anders, please wait up as well. In fact, Anders, you stay at the front. You stay at the front. Mogensen, you can help as well though. Oh, what an unlucky moment for us. That is an absolute joke, man, and I'm not sure we're going to get back in time today. Anyway, we of course need to try and position Surin at the front of this race. You can see Olaf Koy going very early here, it would seem. I'm not sure how Tobias is getting on. Let's throw it up again. Now maybe sprint with Jimmy into the finale. Here goes Surin Wereshko going for the line again today. Maybe gone a little early, but we do have some corners which could save us here. And Surin Wereshko is going to win stage three. But where is Tobias? Please get back, my man. It's not going to happen. My word, guys. That is so frustrating. Surin wins the stage, but sadly it's under a cloud because if we scroll down, Tobias loses two minutes plus, putting him now 12th place in the GC. Anders rises to fourth, but Wout van Aert inherits the lead of the race, and that is giving us pretty much no chance of winning overall with Tobias. However, stage four does give us a chance to really blow up this race with plenty of short hills, very steep hills as well, and you better know that is exactly what I'm going to try and do. And you know what? We get some nice race days as well. Anders on a plus three. Remember, he's still in the GC battle, at least he's above Tobias, now 44 seconds down. So with a plus three, day today he can't time trial so he'll lose time tomorrow but he could definitely still be on for maybe a podium so it would be cool if we could do that with Anders I'm not sure how we can use Tobias he is in the KOM jersey he is two minutes down as well though so looking at things right now I think I'll probably try and hold off until Ulse which is this climb right here the penultimate categorized climb the final third category climb of the day and when we hit that climb, I want to be trying to blow up this race if it isn't already. So Filippo Baroncini coming to the front for Trek Segafredo, a rider I really, really do like in real life. And the tempo is absolutely massive right now, expecting this to be a super selective day, especially after the next few climbs. So we need to be aggressive here, like I said. And I do think this could be a great launch point for a Tobias Harland Johannesson attack. Of course, he's the one who's further down in the GC. He has a bit more of a free card. Here he goes. Look at him fly up this mountain right now. Anders just needs to follow Wout van Aert. All right, so Tobias sweeps up the K-Man points and all but secures that jersey. And look how much this race has now exploded with Tobias up the road. Fulsang desperate to bring him in and only eight riders in the Wout van Aert group behind. Whilst Anders can, of course, just sit there waiting in the wings, conserving his energy. This is a great situation for us now. And of course, I'm not expecting Tobias to hold on here, but this should put Anders in a much superior position in the GC, hopefully to attack these guys later on. But Matej Mohoric, eighth place in the GC. What are you doing? Make Wout do the work. Why would you be pulling him along right now? And so with that riding by Mate, we have Tobias caught now on the front. Ten riders still at the front of the race. He's going to make this difficult, I think. But should we attack now? I think we should probably wait for that final climb. Well, we've exploded the race exactly how I'd planned. We have Esteban Chavez, who has been caught behind. Lots of good riders caught behind as Gianni Moscon punctures. It's Perry roubaix all over again for him, whilst Anders still glued to the wheel of Wout van Aert. We just need Tobias to keep things ticking over on the front. 
front for the moment. Okay then, 5k to go. I think we've played our card pretty perfectly today. I'm not sure there's much more I could have done. But anyway, here comes Anders Johansson. 4k to go. Let's use that gel and let's come to the front of this group and pile the pressure on, hopefully, up to 85. Of course, Tobias is pretty much done here today. But Wout van Aert, is he struggling behind? I hope so. So there you go. Tobias pulls over. He is now done for the day. Let's take a look behind Wout van Aert right at the back of this group. Let's maybe push it to 90 now. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Wout van Aert is dropping. He cannot hold the wheels right now. He cannot sustain this rhythm. Neither can Jakob Fusang. Neither can Matej Mohoric. And look at Anders Johansson go guys what a stage this is what a race this is for the Johanssons and Anders Johansson is going to be the man coming out on top today and I think we also go into the lead of the race what a win probably the biggest of Anders career so far that was unbelievable teamwork. My word, guys. I hope you can see why I love this race so much. So, so exciting. And the bros at their best today. Anders wins by almost a minute ahead of Mahoric, Fusang, Polo and Wout van Aert, who did recover well, to be fair, towards the end of that climb, meaning the gap is just 24 seconds. I'm almost certain he will overhaul that in the final time trial coming up, of course. But I'll be disappointed if Anders can't hold on to second place in the GC whilst Tobias is now in the top 10 as well we have the sprint jersey we have the KOM jersey we have the young riders jersey and we have the team classification it's been a great race I must say what a way to make up for that crash of course the race concludes today with an 18 kilometer time trial holding the lead of the race is going to be impossible but could we maybe snatch a stage victory from Ralph Van Aert we have Surin we have Captain Price we have options Let's go for it. Okay, 1k to go for Captain Price, the first of our real competitors for today's stage. Let's press towards the line. 49 seconds clear early on, and we overtook Axel Zingle as well. And Suram Ramschgold, sadly, not on as good a day as Captain Price. So let's press towards the line. We are 11 seconds back. It's a 1-2 for now. And I think we could be in trouble here. Look at the size of Jonathan Milan. Such a powerful rider. And he is second. Six seconds behind Captain Price. We're holding on. Another strong performer in the TT. It's Mogensen for us. Top five again. Iolo's youngster, Luke Plapp, is next. Can we hold on? We do still. Now. Milan's teammate Jan Tratnik really good at this type of length at time trials let's see where he is he's third nine seconds down we had a very strong second split with Captain Price or sorry final split which is really seemingly helping us and what a race Tobias has had he really has performed here so unlucky with that crash and a brilliant plus four day and a strong time trial in the top 20 professionally to conclude his race you can see the top 10 are now underway Matej Mohoric comes through that second split almost caught by Wout van Aert who is surely going to eclipse Captain Price's best time here Anders is some way off already I'm afraid I mean he was 34 four seconds clear at the second split let's see how much Wout van Aert wins by 42 seconds and Paul Anders is definitely going to be overhauled here that is absurd 42 seconds nonetheless let's make sure we finish second in the GC with Anders his best result so far surely of his career three riders spread across the top 10 for us we beat everyone but the great Wout van Aert who is simply unstoppable in their save the man is possessed 40 Three seconds over 18 kilometers. Of course, he wins the GC as well. And there's over a minute behind him, but really nice result in second place overall. Tobias rises to seventh place as well. Uh, we don't win the sprint jersey. We win the climbing jersey, young riders jersey, and the team classification. Really fun and successful race here in Portugal. And we conclude today's episode with a worrying update that Benji Narsen and his Yolo Kameza team will continue their partnership until 2026. Well, guys, an absolute plethora of races today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm not sure how it's going to come out. I thought I'd try something different. Chuck a load of races into one episode. Just see how it gets on, what you guys react to it. So let me know down below what you thought for sure in the comment section, of course. Let's take a look how it's impacted the rankings. Now we are third place. Remember, we haven't had any World Tour races so far, so I don't think we should be in this ranking at all. No, we are not. Of course, though, in the next episode, we do have Omloop Het News Blad, which many people consider to be the start of the true cycling season. But 
20 victories already in the bag ahead of that. So dudes, make sure you smash that like button down below. Hit subscribe as well if you're new. We're working our way slowly towards 5,000 subscribers. And I will see you guys for Omloop Head News Bats. Thank you.